If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel 37. Just want to remind y'all our schedule. We did it last week and it worked out really well. The, I felt like the prayer time was very reverent, very uh, effective. So we'll do 20 minutes of Bible study, 20 minutes going over our prayer list, and then we will break down and uh, pray. Okay? Father, thank you for the day. And God, just thank you for your word. God, your word is right. It is truth. And God, I just thank you that we can come in, in on a Wednesday night and Lord, we can uh, study scripture and we can discuss even prayer uh, issues and needs. And God, I thank you for just uh, corporate prayer. And uh, God, it's so important. I, I just don't think we can pray too much. So God, just be with us this night. God, uh, illuminate the scriptures to us. And God, I pray that we would uh, encourage uh, people in the faith this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to talk to you tonight, and again, we're not going to have handouts per se. I don't have a three points, <laughs> you know, as far as the deal. Uh, it's just a Bible teaching time, and we're going verse by verse. But tonight, I want to talk to you about dry bones. Okay, dry bones. In Ezekiel 37, uh, Ezekiel was a temple priest and a prophet of God. Uh, well, he was carried into captivity in Babylon. Uh, he complained that his own people were stubborn, self-righteous, rebellious, and rebellious against God. After Jerusalem was destroyed, he told the people of, uh, the people of God's promise to restore the land, to rebuild the temple, and to rebuild the city. Ezekiel prophesied that this dead nation would one day be raised to life. Uh, so let's look at this exciting scripture together. Dry bones, Ezekiel 37, in the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Folks, the hand of the Lord is God guiding you. And when you talk about prayer, uh, you know, I, I just see this also a uh, meditation, uh, spending time with God. All right. And so uh, God was obviously speaking to the prophet Ezekiel. And it, he said he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And folks, the spirit talks to us all the time. I hope, I hope he does you. Uh, he guides us. Uh, he helps us in our prayers. Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit does so many things. He illuminates scripture. Okay. And, and to be an effective prayer warrior, you have to be in the spirit. To pray effectively, you have to be in the Spirit. And I don't want to go into the steps. Uh, there's five steps that I teach uh, on prayer. But the most important one is the first one, I believe, is confession. Okay, if we are going to pray, we need to start with confessing, uh, you know, our sin uh, so that we can have a pure heart uh, in a pure mind. So in the spirit and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. And we know what bones are. Uh, obviously, uh, in first seeing the word bones, uh, there was no flesh there. Uh, he doesn't tell us right off the bat uh, whether these are animal bones or human bones. Uh, but we will see uh, here in just a few minutes that they are human bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And you know, you, you, one thing I want you to do tonight is picture what is going on. Picture what God has uh, asked Ezekiel to do. All right, don't get in a hurry. Just walk through these valley of, of bones. And I know it's, it would, it's kind of a real unusual request. All right, but <coughs> excuse me. Uh, this is what God asked him to do. And it says, and behold, there were very many in the open valley. So the number of is, and when you think of valleys, uh, usually the valleys uh, are large in between the mountains, depending on, but the whole idea is there were bones there and there was a bunch of bones there. And indeed, they were very dry. <coughs> I guess like my throat right now. Sorry about that. <coughs> And what does it mean for the drone, uh, bones to be dry? It means they've been there a while. 
Okay? So get the picture of what he's saying. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? You know, there's rhetorical questions. Uh, there's questions uh, trying to get information. There's questions, uh, you know, kind of find out what knowledge you have also. And so he asked him a question, and he is serious, I believe, about this. <coughs> uh, and I think this, this question here is the key to the rest of the passage. And look at this, son of man, can these bones live. So I answered, <coughs> man, I don't know what, something is hitting me. Let me get a cough drop in here real quick. And I apologize. I was fine <laughs> 10 minutes ago. So I answered, oh Lord God, you know. And it wasn't, I believe that he was putting it back on God. I believe he was simply answering the question. He did not say, I do not, I do not know. He said, you know, which again acknowledges God for who he is. I mean, I, I know there would be a question in my mind. Why, number one, why has he got me here? Number two, why are these bones just laying around? Uh, number three, what is, there's, there's something, there's an illustration, there's something here. Okay, just thinking it over. But he, I feel like, gave a very good answer. And I'll tell you what I tie this to. I tie this to faith, okay? He's saying, talking to God, I may not know, and, and he didn't say that, but he says, I know you know. So he's giving God reverence. He's giving God respect, okay? He's not, you know, thinking it's a trick question. In verse 4, and again he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. You know, I've preached in all kinds of settings. Uh, I know one time when I was a youth minister, uh, we went to a little town outside of Lawton, and uh, honestly, I can't even remember what town it was. Uh, all it had was a gas station and a post office and a Baptist church. That was it. When I did this revival the first night, there were 11 people there. And, you know, some people associate, you know, numbers with effectiveness. Or, but, but it doesn't matter. What I'm trying to say is where we preach, God brings the audience in, okay? Uh, in Numbers, I understand there's a, there's a book in the Bible called Numbers. And I understand Numbers tell us where we are, okay? But, folks, it truly doesn't matter when God gives us an opportunity to preach or even to teach. It should not matter the number there. And, but <laughs> this, this is one of the most unusual things. Prophesy, preach to these bones. Now, one good thing about preaching to bones you're not going to get any complaints, <laughs> all right? You're, nobody's going to give you a hard time. Here's another one. They don't care how long you preach, all right? But it's such an unusual ask. And again, I believe part of this is obeying the voice of the Lord, okay? Why would he have me come out here? Why does he want me to prophesy uh, to bones? Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5, thus says the Lord, to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. So he gives him uh, an idea of what he is looking for, what God wants from him. And, and he's saying, even to the bones, which, again, logically by man makes no sense. Those bones, you know, you know logically cannot hear what Ezekiel is saying. Again, unusual request. But as you see and go down through here, Ezekiel listened to God. Ezekiel was filled with the Spirit, and Ezekiel obeyed the voice of God. And folks, I'm telling you, I believe with all my heart, God speaks to us many times, many times, and we need to listen. Verse 5, thus saith the Lord God to these bones, surely I'll cause breath into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. 
then you shall know that I am the Lord. So Ezekiel, doing what God asked him to do, he simply preaches to these bones and tells them, this is what God's going to do. And folks, that's what a prophet does, okay? When, when I get up here on Sundays, I, I have spent time in study and time in prayer and time with the Lord and time with my Bible. And when I get up here, uh, you know, and we're going through the book of Revelation, to the best of my knowledge and what God has spoke to me, I am saying, thus saith the Lord, okay? And so he says, I will put breath, sinews, skin, and breath, which literally means I am going to bring you alive. I'm going to make you breathe. And then in verse 7 it says, So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I, and as I prophesied, there was a noise and a subtle, suddenly a rattling. As he was obeying, he starts hearing bones clanging. I don't know about you, even though I have faith, even though I know this is where God wants me to be, when you start hearing that, you're, you're wondering, okay, God, what are you doing? What are we doing here? Unusual situation. And it says, indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skins covered them over, but there was no breath in them. So now what do we have? We have bodies. We have bodies. And again, I'm in no reference to, I mean, I don't get the zombie movies and the zombie, what is it, the living dead or something like that? I'm not even sure the title of it. I don't get all that, okay? I'm simply saying this was happening, and there was, a, there was an illustration. There was something Ezekiel was prophesying. And then it says, verse 9, And he also said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man. So what is he said? Keep on preaching, okay? Even though they're just bodies, keep on preaching. And say to the breath, Thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. And folks, we all know, you know, in the future, because we can look, back, look ahead, uh, you know, uh, God can raise people from the dead. I think of Jesus and John chapter 11 and you know, I, I, I think of him, you know, uh, raising Lazarus from the dead. And uh, just let's look at John 11 real quick while we are here. John 11, verse 25. John 11, I'll get there. And Jesus said to her, and this is the conversation, okay, that Jesus was having with the sister of Lazarus. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. So we have an Old Testament example, and we have a New Testament of, uh, example of God and then Jesus raising the dead. And folks, uh, you know, there, there are, are some churches, and they're meeting Okay, they're, they're moving around, uh, but folks, the life, that abundant life, that Holy Spirit, that dunamis of that Acts chapter 2 church is not there, okay? And, and I, I was preaching up in Kansas, again, young in the ministry, and uh, went over the, I went up there and uh, preached, you know, a Monday or a Sunday through a Wednesday revival. And I am telling you, each night I preached my heart out and preached my heart out. And nothing, we had for the first four services, nothing happened. And then on that last night, there was a lady that come down to the invitation. And I noticed she had scrubs on. And she came down to the preacher, and I, I did a, a salvation sermon. And I'm telling you, she was, she was still working. She was in her 60s and still working. And here's what her testimony was at the end of the service. I've been working at this for uh, 45 years, or 40 years in, in, in health care. And I've seen people come, and I see, see people go. 
but I had never truly put my faith and my trust in Jesus Christ. What some people would say, you only had one decision. Well, folks, when somebody gets saved, that is a miracle of God at itself. So I am just telling you, uh, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me shall live. So back in verse 10 at 37, so I prophesied as uh, commanded me and breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. And folks, I believe you can easily, easily make application to the church of the living God. There's some churches that are just going through the motions. There's some churches that are just dead. They, I mean, you know, the Holy Spirit, it may be there kind of, but, but they're, they're just going through the motions. And, and folks, that's not what we need in, in our lives, all right? We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need the Spirit of God making a difference in our life. And, and, and God can change, uh, he can change a church, and he certainly changes people. Verse 11, then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Our hope is lost, and we are cut off. And again, talking about Babylonian uh, being captured there. And it says, Therefore prophesy and say to them, and thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open up your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. <clears throat> and, you know, there's some people, uh, you know, that believe, you know, the, that Israel, you know, while it's still God's chosen people, you know, uh, right now, you know, it, it seems like they're idle right now. It doesn't seem, you know, like there's much going on. I mean, I, I understand war and I understand all that. But I th truly believe this is a prophecy of things to come also, okay, uh, when we talk about the end days. Verse 13, then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your grave, O my people, and brought you up from the graves. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it. Thus saith the Lord. Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible. When you look at this Old Testament, this, this story here, you would think, there's no way. I mean, logically looking at it, you, you'd think, there's no way. But my Bible says, with, with men, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. And the other thing that really rang a bell with me personally is, folks, you know what we need? I am telling you, our nation needs revival. We need revival. Folks, I'm telling you, uh, we, are, we are dead spiritually as a nation. Uh, we have strayed away from God. We have done so many things against God and against God's Word. And everybody's tried to tell us, you know, you know, you, you, you know, you got to just let people be people. Well, folks, uh, Christians have to live according to the Word of God and and, you know, every, the, the government, every, so many people are trying to change, you know, society. And, and, and I'm just saying, you know, we should love the sinner. But folks, we have to stand against sin. Sin will always be sin. And, and I am just praying personally for revival uh, in, in our, you know, even in our church. If it could just start in our church and uh, uh, just move out from there. And that's what I want us kind of to focus on tonight. It kind of just, I was thinking about this this morning when I was going over it again. I would, I would like us tonight to really focus on revival first in our church and revival uh, in our country. Last 
One, I want you to see Psalm 85. Go to Psalm 85 with me, if you would. Psalm 85, verse 4. Restore us, O God, to our salvation, and cause your anger towards us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? And folks, you have to know that God is not happy with us as, as Americans. All right, we've, we've, let, we've let too many things uh, go. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy and grant us your salvation. You know what I have always been taught and what I always, and I, I believe this even tonight, is, uh, you know, 44 years in the ministry, uh, I believe revival has to start with me. Okay? If I, if, if I you know, and, and folks, the human nature is to look around at everybody else. Even tonight, it would be easy for us to say, well, why, why aren't there more people here? Okay? Well, you, know, what, you know, we don't seem to be the problem. And I'm not saying we are the problem. I'm simply saying revival has to start somewhere. And I say, Lord, begin it in me. And here's what I believe with all my heart. If enough of us take that challenge seriously, God's going to bring revival to our church. When you think about it, Jesus had 12. 12. And I mean, he turned his world upside down with those 12s. I think of that Acts chapter 2 church, that, that on fire, that Holy Spirit church filled with the Spirit, making a difference in society. Father, uh, thank you for just the word. And God, thank you for revival. And God, sometimes it's just a lost term. Uh, we don't hear revivals much going on. And, and I know they're going on in the world. I know it. But God, it's, it's more than just America. We need it in Arkansas. We need it in Oklahoma. We need it in our church. So God, I pray as we, even in our own prayer times, in our own prayer closets, I pray that this group here, this group would bind together and pray for revival first in our church and then in our city. And God, we will be careful to give you the praise. And God, we know you want revival. And God, I thank you that we have a strong faith and we do believe and we know you raised the dead. You raised Jesus from the dead. And God, that it was truly one of the greatest days in the history of mankind. So thank you for that victory. And God, again, I pray for revival. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.